What's going on everybody? This is Tatro and today I'm gonna to take you through my home studio setup. If you're a home studio music producer like me, you know how important it is to have a place in your home or sometimes even your bedroom where you can sit and work for hours on your music. Not only is this a place where you're working and practicing your craft, but it's also a place where you're probably learning, consuming a bunch of tutorials and actually becoming a better music producer. Because when you have a home studio, you're not just walking into some recording studio where there's an engineer or producer to help you get along and work things. You're buying the gear, figuring out how to use it, and then coming up with all these musical ideas all on your own, independently. And it can be hard to find great resources out there to really balance all of that, to make sure that you're learning at a fast enough rate that your artist side still gets satisfied and you can still create the art you are looking to make in the first place. And since the purpose of this channel is to help you along on your electronic music production home studio journey, I wanted to give you an offer from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is offering my subscribers two months free by using the link down in my description. And if you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creators. And once you sign up, you get access to all 25,000 classes in business, music, design, and more. If you try it out for a couple months and decide you like it, Skillshare is also super affordable at under $10 a month and you'll still get access to all these courses that you can take at your own pace. And you can also dive into different subjects. It can be really hard to find resources on a diverse range of subjects that are all of a certain quality and all have to do with that certain niche that you're going for. Like home studio music production, you're learning about DAWs, you're learning about editing, music theory, potentially making videos like these. That's a lot of different things to pull from and Skillshare has classes in all of those subjects. I highly suggest you take advantage of the two month free trial and join the 7 million other creators learning with Skillshare. Use the link in my description and sign up today. All right, now let's get into the setup tour. I had actually been delaying and delaying this video because I always feel like my setup is never really ready or at 100%, but then I realized I've been waiting years to make an updated setup tour video and I might as well just make them more frequently as my setup evolves, which it changes day to day, but the setup I'm about to show you is pretty much the steady setup that I've been using for a while. Let's go ahead and just start with the desk that everything is sitting on. It's a Linman Ikea tabletop and Adil's legs. If you've kept a keen eye on some of my videos, you've noticed it can be a little wobbly, but you can't beat the price of Ikea desks. And I've had this one for years. And as I get into all these items on my desk, all the links are gonna be in the description. They are Amazon affiliate links. All that means if you're interested in an item and you wanna use my Amazon link at no additional cost to you, I'll get a little kickback if you decide to make a purchase after using one of my links. The entire setup is powered by my 2018 MacBook Pro. This is the 15 inch model with a 2.2 gigahertz i7 processor and 16 gigabytes of RAM. The MacBook Pro is sitting on an Amazon Basics metal stand. And tucked in behind there, you can see all of my lacy hard drives. And because I work on some other video projects, not just for this channel, I have to have tons of storage so that I can save all those files. I have a USB-C hub that has two USB ports, an SD card slot, and an HDMI out. This allows me to pretty much have one thing to plug into my computer when I put it down at my setup. My monitor is attached to it, as well as my bigger USB hub that lives on the desk. This is an Amazon Basics 10 port hub. This thing is powered, so I don't have any issues with controllers or the interface drawing too much power. It's plugged in and everything that lives and stays on the desk is connected to the hub and the hub is then connected to the USB-C hub so that I only have one connection point actually going to the computer. Next up, my monitor. I have a 21.5 inch curved Samsung monitor for no real reason other than it was probably on sale and I thought the idea of having a curved monitor was cool and different. And it hasn't failed me. I don't mind having a curved monitor at all. To save some desk space, I have the monitor mounted onto a single Vivo stand, which fastens to the desk and gets the monitor up and off the desk so that I can actually push some of my controllers right up towards the monitor. For my keyboard and mouse, I have a Lawfree mechanical keyboard that is backlit and Bluetooth. It's just a really cool looking typewriter style keyboard. And then I have the Apple Magic Mouse, which was given to me as a gift, and you can't argue with that aesthetic. Having a Bluetooth mouse and keyboard is great because you don't have to worry about extra wires when we've already got the controllers and the interface that have their own USB cables. The less wires, the better. And that brings me to my Ableton Push 1. Yes, I am using an Ableton Push 1, not 2, in the year 2019. 
I bought the Ableton Push 1 a long time ago and have never really felt the need to upgrade even though you've probably seen my beat performance with the Push 2. You know, Push 2 feels great and you get that added screen capability, being able to see waveforms and chop on there. But for me, I can't really justify the price. And the Ableton Push 1 does so many of the things I need to do. Since I am an Ableton user, the Ableton Push is sitting on a Nulexi riser, which having these risers is really helpful, not just to get the controllers up and facing you, but it's also helpful for cable management. I run so many of my cables and store little things under these stands. It gives the desk an overall much cleaner look. The second controller on my desk is the Complete Control A25. I love having full size keys on my desk. You know, I love to use mini MIDI keyboards, especially when I'm on the go or when I'm making beats around the apartment. But on my desk, having those full size keys is really nice. The great thing about the A25 form factor is that the keys actually sit high enough so that they're just over the keyboard. So I can be typing on my mechanical keyboard and then put my hands up on the piano keyboard and not have any conflict there. Like I'm not bumping into my mechanical keyboard while I'm playing the keys because it's slightly risen off the desk. My interface right now is the Complete Audio 6 Mark II, that's six in and six out. I like having a slightly bigger interface that lives on my desk, take the smaller ones on the go, because if I'm sitting at my desk and I want to plug in, say, the circuit, a microphone, a guitar, a drum machine, I have those options. I can just plug them all in at once. And I really love the aesthetic of the second generation complete audio interfaces, the mix of gloss and matte black. I also love the LEDs on the top that give you the level feedback. And when I am working with a vocalist or recording audio, I have a blue bird microphone on a suspension boom arm that lives right on the desk. I love having this suspension boom arm. You associate a lot with Twitch streamers, you know, or broadcasters, but having this on the desk is cool because I can get it out of the way. I don't have a big clunky mic stand in my way, but when I want to use it, I can either pull it closer to me if I'm doing voiceovers or something at the desk, or I can raise it straight up and actually stand at it and it sits at a pretty good height. My monitors, you know, I'm sure people in the comments are gonna say something about them, but I use the KRK RP5s. I have for a very long time. I got these off a Craigslist deal at a steal of a price and they haven't failed me. I guess the most important thing about studio monitors is just understanding how they sound in relation to all these other speakers that are out there, how they sound in relation to your car stereo or your Apple AirPods, because that's what people are listening to your music in. So when I'm listening to mixes on the Rocket 5s, you know, I don't really have a problem understanding that maybe these aren't the best monitors. I don't really know what the best monitors are, but understanding how they sound in relation to how other speakers sound. And as long as you know your monitors, you're good to go. Now with all of this, I do like to keep a nice clean setup so that there aren't many cables visible anywhere on top of the desk, but I do have them all gathered underneath in that typical Ikea cage cable management that is mounted to the bottom of the desk alongside a power strip. So all the plugs aren't plugged into a power strip on the ground, they're actually plugged into a power strip that's mounted to the bottom of the desk, which helps for a little bit of a cleaner setup. You know, home studio setup shouldn't be all work and no play. It's gotta look cool. It's gotta be a place you like to go sit for hours and hours on end. So I have a couple cool items on the desk or around the desk to make me have that cool sci-fi cyberpunk feel that I like. So that's the Lifex lights that are up on the wall. These are actually controlled by an app. I can make them pretty much any color and animate them. They're a really cool addition. And the Neon Skull Lamp by Neon MFG as well as an LED strip that is adhered to the back of the desk to give some like backsplash light. Combine all those things and you can actually make a pretty ordinary desk setup look pretty cool. So that's my home studio desk setup tour. Let me know what you thought about this setup in a comment down below. Am I crazy for some of these items? Do you have a better alternative? Let me know. All the links to these items are down listed in the description in case you're interested in getting them for your own setup. And don't forget to check out the two months free of Skillshare. You should definitely take advantage to at least the free trial. If you're watching this video and you follow me over on Instagram and you wanna share your home studio setup, tag me in your story of your home studio setup and I might just share it on my story. But thanks so much for watching. This has been Tatro. Have a good one.